Hello everyone, this is Nino and tonight we shall be doing something unusual. We'll be talking about something practical. I devised a movement sensor. This is consisting out of an ultrasonic sensor, or this thing here, connected to an ESP8266 microcontroller, which is Wi-Fi enabled. And what happens is that if the ultrasonic sensor is detecting movement, it is going to tell the microcontroller, which is going to send an email at a disposable email provider, a trash mail provider of your choice. And thereby, even if you're far away from home, you can figure out whether somebody, you know, passed through a door, opened a drawer or things like that. For the way this works is this. This sensor is emitting ultrasonic pulses and detecting how long uh, the echo takes to return. And from this, distances can be measured. Once you deploy this whole contraption, which is, by the way, very easy because you just need to turn it on to power somehow, be it over USB or be it through a battery or somehow else. Once you turn it on, you have 20 seconds to put it somewhere. 20 seconds because you'll be fumbling it for 20 seconds and you don't want it to be screaming, ah, I noticed movement because, yes, we know you noticed movement. Uh, you, once you deploy it, it is going to measure the distance then. And it is going to call that the expected distance. And this is the distance which should not be disturbed. That is, neither shortened too much by something moving in front of the sensor, nor lengthening it too much. For instance, you put the sensor in a drawer, you pull out the drawer, and the sensor is hitting the ceiling. Then the distance becomes obviously too big. When that happens, and five measurements consecutively say the deviation has happened that it's too big. Then, and these, these happen quickly, but they are needed to, to establish that there is no disturbance in the sensor. This is something you have to account for when you make such experiments. And when it notices that these measurements really are off, it is going to tell the controller and the controller is going to send an email and, and that's all there is to it. Let's look at how it looks in practice. Here I'm going to show you the debug print from the serial port at the Arduino IDE. I think in the final version I might even turn this off. It's rather practical to see what it does. This particular sensor is showing you here each five measurements. Each of these needs to become less than 80% or more than 125% of the established distance. This piece here is defect in so far as it always shows a maximum distance of 54 centimeters, but for study purposes, this defect proved extremely useful. It is then also measuring the time since deployment when the disturbance happened. You don't only want to know what, what happened, but also when it happened, right? And it is going to record internally and send to you as the user the last 250 disturbances. I really hope you do not have to witness this thing tell 250 disturbances because that would mean not just somebody breaking into your flat or checking out your stuff. It means them, I don't know, making a whole ball with, with noblemen and, and princesses for, for so many disturbances to happen. Anyway, so you're having here the distances, you're having the time, and last, you're having something which is called RECMIN. This is the minimum activation period. That is, the sensor is going to activate itself only after 10 seconds, after 10 seconds or more after the last disturbance. So it's not like it, it makes like five disturbances in two seconds and you get a volley of emails, but that you only get the first major disturbance and then it is peaceful for 10 seconds. I shall now glide with my hand over the sensor, thereby significantly shortening the distance from the 54 expected centimeters, that is way less than the 80%. And you're going to say that it is going to say triggered. And it is also going to say that it is sending an email. It's reporting on me immediately. So three, two, one, triggering, sending email. That's it. And now before the 10 seconds, I can put my hand here, but it does not trigger yet because the rec mean value had not yet reached 10. Uh, yeah, okay, it remembered it apparently, but that's it. 
two emails, not a not hundred, not e all the waving. Okay, so that's what it does. You saw it working. Now let's see it from a user perspective. What does it look like? Yeah, here you see it. I am here at, uh, yeah, I know I got two new mails. Actually got a whole volley of mails because I've been testing this now for a while. Uh, it is telling you, uh, you know, you, you just pick here a, an account. I said, said it shall be ultrasonic sensor, that's spam for me. It works with Guerrilla Mail, and I've tested it also with Harakiri Mail. It, it, it should generally work. Uh, and it works by sending you this email through a classic SMTP chatter, just like in the 1990s. I, I do love these disposable email addresses because you do not need any email libraries or anything. No encryption, no nothing. You just, you know, you just talk to it. <laughs> And it sends the email with a name, which I suggest you pick uniquely for each of your sensors. Like I picked your X, but you can call it, I don't know, you can call it Gregorius. <laughs> you could call it Alexander. I think that would be a beautiful name. So you, you, you click here and then it is showing you the last disturbance and you know, all the 250 last ones. So, how long after deployment the disturbance happened and at what distance. And moreover, at an interval which you have to set when you upload your program to the microcontroller, you're going to get a periodic email where it is telling you, hey, I'm alive. The reason you're not reading from me is not because I'm off, but because there was no disturbance. Because otherwise, if you don't get an email, you don't know, is it because it died somehow or is it because there's really just nobody at home? So this one is, an activation mail, but there is also a keep alive mail. And the activation mail looks this way, that it just really sends you the uh, like newest tops last disturbances. And in the beginning, when there's no disturbance, that's what you get, like everything zero. And later on, you see when the disturbances start and what distance it denoted as a disturbance. That's pretty much all there is to it from a user perspective. And now let's look a little bit more into the deployment part. So what do you need to set up? I shall quickly guide you through that so that it is hopefully useful for you. Well, in the beginning, you evidently have to name your Wi-Fi. It's like uh, so that the microcontroller can connect to it. Then you need to tell what shall be the target email server like uh, Harakiri mail, Guerrilla mail, whatever you want, you know. Then what your sensor shall be called, for instance, I don't know, Horst or Hannah. Uh, <laughs> then your source email. Now this can be fake, but it should come from an email provider which actually handles emails. Otherwise, uh, Harakiri mail, for instance, definitely will complain. So uh, I, I use them actually, <laughs> as the domain and the name would be helpful if it is the same name as your sensor. It's just for your own ease. So, you know, I don't know whether the couch is talking to you or the bal balcony. Your target email address, like where I picked the ultrasonic sensor, you know, some mailbox at, uh, at Guerrilla Mail or Harakiri Mail or something else. Then some recent date. It does not need to be particularly realistic. I picked once one from 1999 and it worked, but servers do complain if there is no date. So pick anything. I picked a date where I met a very, very dear friend. Alex, thank you for inspiring me to do that over email. The next thing you set up is the hours for the regular, hey, I'm alive, I'm online uh, message. Uh, you do that with this um, hours value. And the last thing you are setting up is the echo ping and the trig pin. That depends really on where you set them up. On my ESP8266, I used pins uh, D6 and D5, which for this IDE are apparently 14 and 12. And that's the end of the user settings. Once you do that, you, you strike upload into your controller and the thing is ready to be put, well, wherever you would like to, to activate it. That's pretty much all to it in this version. There's also another version, I think I'll post that online too, where you do not get emails, but where you need to log in into its Wi-Fi and pick up your values there. But in reality, that's more tiresome than just 
you know, just enjoying it, do everything itself, uh, and then send you an email. <laughs> well, anyway, now, if you have another minute or so, I shall very quickly walk you through the code in case you uh, want to see what it does and why it does it. In the beginning, we're setting up some variables, blah, blah, blah. But we're having here, yeah, the array of memories. Uh, this is like the last disturbances it recorded, the last 250. Then you are uh, setting up the Wi-Fi network, right? You're, you're connecting to the Wi-Fi network. And then you're having here this 20 seconds break where, where you deploy the gadget. Then different measurements are undertaken and averaged in order to establish the expected distance. This is the expected distance then. The nice thing is you don't have to know the distance. It will figure it out itself 20 seconds after deployment. You're also measuring a low distance and a high distance, like not measuring, but determining, uh, by saying that these values should not be undercut or overstepped. If, if that happens, then there is actual movement going on. The rest might be just sensor disturbances, so don't set them too narrowly. Then you're having the main loop where you are doing all the time a new measurement. However, while you are doing that, here this determining the distance from the duration, uh, you are also taking into account the last four measurements prior to it. And only if all five measurements are deviating, for instance, up or down, then do you notice there was a movement. Thereby, you are guarding against stuttering of the sensor where it sometimes gives you a fantasy value. By averaging over them, you get more reliable measurements. So that, that's actually the triggering part, you know. The distance should be above zero, because really it should be above zero. Uh, and, but it should not be lower than the lowest distance, and it should not be higher than the highest distance. Because if it is, we have movement, then it is, as you saw, triggering. And yeah, then it is going to, <laughs> to re-establish quarter of a second afterwards a new expected distance. For instance, somebody pulls the drawer and it is now pointing to the ceiling. It is going to say, okay, now the ceiling is the expected distance. And it will trigger again once that person closes the drawer again. Right? For very quick movements, like passing through a door, like somebody just passes through the door, it might not even establish a new distance. Uh, but, but that's what it does. I did that in order to prevent it from, from, for instance, the sensor falling into a new position, getting a new distance, and your sensor complaining endlessly. So resyncing your, resynchronizing your expected distance turns out practically important. After you have been disturbed, you are connecting to the target mail server and doing an old style chat as you would do over Telnet. You perhaps know you can send email over Telnet. You, you say this hello thing, like the most old fashioned way, mail from receipt to data, the header. And then as the body of the email, you are sending the memories, like the last 250 disturbances. And then you're doing some time measurements. You're increasing seconds, minutes, and hours. And note this, here is this rec min, where you're increasing this uh, recorded minimum time for the sensor to be activated twice. I'll show you where it's used. It's used way up here. The sensor will trigger only if this thing is above the forced pause second so that you don't get a flurry of data, but just one warning. Yeah, and that's pretty much all there is to it, except that we are now here. This is the periodic ping, where I thought maybe every six hours, that's why I called the variable that way, but it can be any time you like, uh, in whole hour measurements. We're saying after how many hours this thing shall tell you, hey, uh, by the way, <laughs> Uh, I am still awake, I'm still measuring that you don't get activation emails is because there's nobody at your home, which, which is good news, you know, but, but you should be sure that the sensor didn't just die on you. And yeah, that's all. That's all there is to it. It's not a complex program. So I hope you enjoyed that. And yeah, finally did something practical. I don't believe I did that, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, see you soon. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a great evening and goodbye.